After coveting Willow for three years, I finally gave in and abducted her to my home. I fastened a silver chain around her ankle and told her never to even think about leaving me in this lifetime. In the first month, she preferred death over yielding, wanting me to set her free. During the second month, she slowly started to compromise, tacitly permitting me to share the bed with her. In the third month, she began to push me even further, interrogating me as to why I was five minutes late coming home. Was I out fooling around with other women? Seeing the woman in front of me playing with the silver chain, with a slight redness in the corners of her eyes, I broke down. After all, who is the real Yandera here? You're five minutes late again today. Willow said coldly, sitting on the bed, looking at me. Jacob, our company closes at six, and even with traffic, it only takes twenty minutes to get home. But you've been five minutes late for three days in a row. Are you fooling around with some woman again? She sneered, her red lips curling into a dangerous arc. Don't tell me I'm about to have a new roommate moving here. I swallowed, watching nervously as the woman in front of me played with the silver chain. She slowly leaned forward, parting her long legs and kneeling on either side of me, sitting atop me looking down, the corners of her eyes flashed a cool laugh. Did you forget what I said yesterday? One more time for every minute you're late. She wound the silver chain around my foot. Maybe this chain suits you better than me. I looked at her in horror, trying to explain, but she firmly covered my mouth, leaving me no choice but to scream in my heart. Who the hell is the real Yandere here? She was supposed to be an unreachable high lady. I turned around sharply to see Willow, standing in the rain with an umbrella. She was wearing a well-tailored black suit skirt, a look of mockery flashed through her gold-framed glasses. No wonder you're not answering my calls, not replying to my messages, so you have a new love interest. Willow's thin lips pulled into a smile mixed with contempt and anger. Jacob, you really are something. You say how much you like me. Is it what you say to everyone? I was shocked and then filled with anger, tightly clutching my fingers. Willow, are you crazy? You are the one who left first, and now you are blaming me? Do you expect me to keep following you like a lapdog just because you don't like me? Willow frowned. Yes, I left, but that was because my father was hospitalized in the U.S. I called you, but you didn't answer, even my messages you didn't reply. Is it not because you have an eye for her? She pointed at Vanessa. I was stunned. There was indeed a strange number that had called me a few times that day. But those days my information was leaked, I was often called to take out loans, I thought it was also a harassment call, so I didn't answer. But I didn't receive any messages. I thought for a moment and quickly took out my phone. Indeed, there was a message in the spam box, all sent from the same stranger number. Jacob, my father had a car accident in the US, I have to go there for a while. I've thought carefully about what you said, I'm not playing with you but I don't want to tell you I like you in such a rough way as a message, I want to say it to you in person when I come back, wait for me. I stood there aghast, staring at the message, motionless. Did you change your number? After a long while, I managed to say. That number was deactivated, this is my secondary number. I clutched my phone tightly, explaining in a flustered manner, I didn't see, the stranger number was blocked into the spam box, I... Willow just looked at me indifferently. Do you know what I've been through these half months? I wanted to send you a message, but found out I've been deleted and blocked by you. I sent you text messages, but you never replied once. I was so anxious, I took the earliest flight back, I also thought it might just be a misunderstanding, but... She glanced at Vanessa and sneered. It turns out there was no misunderstanding at all, you just found someone new. It's a misunderstanding, I. Then you tell me, what were you two just doing? Jacob, I was gone for less than half a month. I was dumbfounded and couldn't speak. The atmosphere just now, to be honest, I couldn't say there was no ambiguity. Willow didn't look at me another second, she turned around and got in the car. The black Rolls Royce sped off in the rain, without stopping again. Jacob, is she the one you confessed to and got rejected? Vanessa asked me, looking down. I nodded gloomily and took the tie clip off my tie and handed it back to her. Take back the gift. I really can't accept it. 
but still, thank you. Vanessa paused, a faint bitter smile curling at the corner of her mouth. That's pretty heartless. All right, I will take it back this time. I hope you won't refuse me next time. I was devastated and couldn't make out what she was saying. After saying goodbye, I turned to go upstairs. The room was dark on a gloomy evening. I sat heavily on the edge of the bed and stared at the message Willow had sent me. She said she likes me. So, she likes me too. I slowly buried my face in my knees, but I had pushed her away with my own hands. I admit that when I saw Vanessa, my heart wavered for a moment. I thought there are always people in this world who would like me, and if Willow doesn't like me, then I wouldn't like her either. What was she feeling during those half months when she was across the ocean, wanting to contact me but not daring to? I covered my face. I am such a fool, I messed everything up. The next day, Willow came back to the company. I wanted to see her and I was afraid to see her at the same time. When I occasionally ran into her in the elevator, I didn't know what to say. But she had already walked past me without a glance. She really seemed not to want to have anything more to do with me. I racked my brains for several days, not knowing how to apologize to her. As I was considering whether to take a direct approach and burst into her office and hug her leg to beg for her forgiveness, a colleague next to me gave me a nudge all of a sudden. Jacob, did you know that our boss is getting married soon? What? CEO Willow, the rich and beautiful lady has finally been taken. He handed his phone to me with a gossipy look. Just tweeted, she's getting engaged to the third son of Blue Ridge. In the photo, the man was tall and handsome, and the woman beside him had delicate features. They were a perfect match. I had to admit, even I had to compliment, a perfect match. All the young guys in our company are now devastated, but it's understandable. What kind of background does Ms. Willow have? There's no way for her the princess falls in love with a poor boy type of story, it's definitely a marriage that matches in social and economic status. He kept talking. But I couldn't hear anything anymore. I stood up abruptly, startling my colleague. What's wrong with you? Without a word, I headed towards Willow's office. I wanted to ask her personally. Just as I got to the office door, a man came out. He wore an expensive-looking suit and was smiling, hand in hand with Willow. I'll come for you tomorrow. Don't forget to eat well. Behind him, Willow's eyes were full of smiles, whispering. Okay, be careful on your way home. Send me a message when you get home. This was the first time I had seen her so gentle. Except for in bed, she had never been like this to me. I came to a halt, staring blankly. The man looked at me with confusion. Willow, who is this? Willow glanced at me, her eyes without a trace of warmth. Just an insignificant person. Saying so, she left with the man at her arm, passed by me. I stood there dumbfounded, my feet seemed to freeze, unable to move. It felt like all the blood in my heart had been drained. Otherwise, why would it seem like it was not beating anymore? An insignificant person, huh? That's correct. Aren't I just an insignificant person? Not until a colleague passed by me, patting me, saying, Jacob, what's wrong? Are you here for Ms. Willow? She just sent off her fiancé, why don't you come back later? I lowered my head, lightly touched my chest, tried to pull up a smile, but I also knew that smile lying was weirdly pitiful. It's okay. I whispered. I'm not gonna look for her anymore. The next day, I submitted my resignation. The leaders and colleagues tried to persuade me to stay, asking why I wanted to leave when things were going well. I remained silent for a long moment before saying, because the reason for staying here is gone. I joined this company for Willow. Now that she's engaged, it's time for me to leave. On the day I left with the cardboard box, I ran into Willow at the elevator. She was still dressed in her professional suit, looking high and mighty, showing no sign of ever being chained to my bed by a silver necklace. She glanced at the box in my hand, emotionless. Are you leaving? I nodded without saying a word. Jacob, you really are something. She suddenly smiled, but the smile didn't reach her eyes. I didn't know what she meant by saying this. And I couldn't be bothered guessing anymore. Things have come to this point, she can't possibly give up her marriage alliance for me, so what's the point of clinging on? 
It would only make me look worse. I offered my last bit of dignity. I wish you a happy marriage. But Willow just stared at me without uttering a word. The elevator arrived quickly, and I turned to leave. The gaze from behind was burning. It lingered on. News of Willow's engagement quickly spread and even made it onto the local newspapers. In the photos, both were handsome and beautiful. Anyone would have to say that they were a match made in heaven. The engagement date was set in June. I can't tell how I spent those days. Frantically sending out resumes, I kept myself busy to not have a chance to think about her. Because once free, I would think of her. The bedroom she had slept in was locked up by me and became a forbidden area in the house. I threw away all the bedding that we had intertwined countless times, as if I could also throw away the memories. During this time, Vanessa often came to find me. Either there was a new dessert shop in the city that had a long queue that she wanted to try, or there was a nice coffee shop in the west of the city and asked if I wanted to go with her. At first, I refused her each time, even being blunt and telling her that I'm not looking to date. But each time, she would just laugh and say, that's okay, I'll come again next time, maybe you'll agree then. After a few times, I couldn't just keep refusing. So I went out with her a few times. Young girls indeed have this magical power, with her, I really felt a lot relaxed. And when she offered me to take a bite of her candy, I really did forget about all the things that had made me sad. But when I returned home at night and was alone, those memories would come back, like a doggedly persistent disease, reminding me whenever I closed my eyes. One day, Vanessa asked me to go with her to the beach to feed the seagulls. Walking barefoot on the sand with her, the salty sea wind and the freshness of the spray from the waves, I suddenly felt a lot lighter. Jacob, what kind of women do you like? Vanessa asked, tilting her head. I thought for a moment. Well, who wears suits well, seems serious on the surface but is actually flirtatious, can have really nice conversations with me, and preferably wears a pair of gold-rimmed glasses too. Before I could finish, the image of someone appeared in my mind. Not far away, a couple was drawing hearts on the beach, laughing and chasing each other. After tiring out, the two of them sat leaning against each other on the beach. The girl suddenly asked, What if we break up in the future? I would chase you back, of course. What if you can't chase me back? The boy thought about it and said, Then I'll keep chasing until I get you back. Jacob, actually I. Vanessa seemed to want to say something, but my brain was in utter chaos and I couldn't understand anything. Suddenly, the bells of a distant church rang out. As an afterthought, I realized that today was the day of Willow's engagement. She would be given a ring by another man, vowing to love him forever. She would share intimacy and a bed with another person. She will leave my world completely and have no more involvement with me. The sea breeze blew through my hair, and I suddenly felt a wave of indescribable emotion flooding my heart. At this moment, I really wanted to see Willow. Once the thought took hold, I couldn't control it. I said to Vanessa, I'm sorry, I have some urgent matters. I need to go first. Vanessa just looked at me for a while, her eyes complex. Are you going to see Willow? I nodded, yes. Vanessa dipped her eyes, and after a long silence, she showed a helpless smile. It's hard to catch a cab from here to the church. Let me give you a ride. I didn't know what to say, so I awkwardly thanked her. Vanessa sighed. You don't need to thank me. If she doesn't treat you well, come back to me. On the way, I was extremely anxious, worried that the engagement ceremony would be over if I arrived too late. Vanessa drove me all the way to the church entrance. Once I alighted from the vehicle, I rushed in. I have never run as fast in my life as I did. All I thought was to get there a bit faster, to see her a bit sooner. I shoved open the doors of the church. The priest was all in white. Next to him, Willow was bathed in a rosy hue from the light coming in through a window. It made her look softer. Out of breath, I came to a halt, eyes wide. Apart from Willow and the priest, the church was completely empty. Let alone the man from that day. Did I come early? I felt a scattered fear, or did I come late, had they finished already? Just as I was filled with unease, Willow suddenly revealed a kind of relieved smile. She said to the priest, My fiancé is here, let's start. I was dumbfounded. 
Wait, aren't you getting engaged to the son of Blue Ridge today? Willow came over and took my hand. He is a business partner. He doesn't want an arranged marriage, so he allowed me to invest in his company to help him start his own business and escape from family control. So, he agreed to act as my fiancé in front of you. You tricked me? Willow chuckled softly. What else? Jacob, I was waiting for you to come to me, but even after you resigned, you didn't want to clear things up with me. Without this, would you have come to find me? Why didn't you come to find me instead? I was amused and also annoyed. Why should I? Willow looked down at me from high up. You flirted with other women in front of me. If I went looking for you, wouldn't that be a loss of face? I am glad you didn't disappoint me. I found myself laughing and angry at the same time. What if I didn't come today? Willow fell silent. It took her a while before she said. Then, I would think of another way. She held my hand, then took out a finely adorned diamond ring and handed it to me. Consider this a loan. You have to buy one for me later. The priest grinned at us. Willow was serious. Jacob, you still owe me an apology. But I also owe you a confession, I like you. In fact, I noticed you a long time ago. But because my father cheated on my mother when I was young which led to her committing suicide due to depression, I've been resistant to relationships. I was scared that my other half would betray me and also scared that I might turn into the type of person I hate the most, like my dad. But now I've realized that I wouldn't betray you, and I will always treat you well, have you always by my side? So, will you marry me? My eyes were sour, and I shakily put the ring on her ring finger. Yes, I do! Two months later, Willow and I got married. Mainly because she was in a hurry, she was afraid that if we didn't get married soon, I would start bringing home new sisters and girlfriends. On the wedding day, Vanessa also came. She wore a disgruntled expression. Jacob, what's so good about her compared to me? She's old, am I not young and beautiful? Smiling, I held Willow's hand. But I just like her. Vanessa reluctantly pulled out a box from her pocket. Here's the tie clip from before, you wouldn't take it back then, can you accept it now as a wedding gift? I reached out and took the box. Thank you. You're welcome, if she treats you badly in the future, you can come and find me, I'll be waiting. Well, wait then. Willow scoffed. Even if you wait until your death, it won't come. After the wedding, Willow moved into my house. I asked her if she was out of her mind, abandoning her own hillside villa and instead choosing to live in my small under 100 square meter room. Willow didn't say anything and went into the bedroom. Shortly after, she walked out, still with the silver chain wrapped around her wrist. I remember, I think you still owe me five hours. She laughed suggestively. Then let's get started. Wait! I panicked. Why are you bringing up ancient history? Why are you holding grudges? Willow pushed me down in one go. If you say another word, I'll add another time. 